Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at comp tracks and take folders to help us easily select the best performance takes inside of Logic Pro. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the vocal project we're going to be recording from today. You'll see I've got a few different vocal tracks. I've just got each section staggered on different tracks just because there's a little bit of overlap. So you notice on these tracks, there's a few little lines here. And what those represent are edit points. So anywhere you see a little line, there's an edit in my comp track. And you'll also notice each of these regions have a little arrow. And that's how you know these are comp tracks. So for example, if I hit the arrow on this track, now we see all the tracks that are found within this comp track. So we actually have four different takes that make up our one comp track. And you can see where these lines are. Those are where the edit points happen. So right now you can see the beginning is from take four. This is just dead air. And then take two from here to here. And then we go back to take four and then take three and we end on take four. So everything that's highlighted blue, that's what we're gonna be using in our final comp. And everything that's shaded gray is gonna be muted. And then at the top here, this just mirrors your selection down here. So whatever is blue down here, that's what's gonna show up on the top track. So the top track is your comp track and what you're gonna be hearing. And then once again, if I hit the little arrow, then we're just gonna see the top comp track and all the takes get hidden. So I'm gonna start by showing you guys how to create a comp track. So if you're recording a new session, let's just go ahead and create a new audio track. I'm gonna be on input one and hit create. I'm just gonna mute this just for feedback sake. And you can see signal here from my vocal just talking and I'm just gonna hit record and record myself talking a little bit so you can see there's some audio happening there. And I'll just go ahead and stop that. And then now if I wanna create a comp track, all I have to do is record a second take right over top of the first one. So again, I'm just gonna hit record and I'm just talking a little bit more. I'm recording right over that first track we did. And when I'm done doing my take, then I can stop it. And now you see that it created a comp take automatically. So I've got take one, take two, and then my comp track up top. So by default, it just selected the last take that I did, which was take two, um, which shows up here. And if I wanna hide all the takes, I can simply hit the little arrow and then that'll hide the takes and once again. So if I wanted to add more takes to this, just the same process, just re-record right over that same track and it'll start adding more and more takes to your comp track. So once we've recorded a handful of takes, now I'm gonna show you how to edit your comp. So I'm gonna go back to the vocals we recorded earlier. So let's take this first section, for example. I'll just do a little loop over that. And I'm gonna expand all the takes again by hitting the little arrow here. As I mentioned before, when you're first recording a comp track, it'll display the last track that you recorded as your main comp. I made a few edits already, so I'm just gonna go back and select one full take. So to do that, you can go up here, right now where there's a little B, I'll click on that, and I can select the first take. So if I click on that, so now that's selected this entire take. Now I can also go over here and click on the file name and that'll also do the same thing. So it'll select this whole take, take six, seven, number eight, and so on. So generally what I would do when I'm doing a comp is I would listen to a small section of each take and select the best take of that phrase or section. So for example, I might just loop this little bit and we can start with take four. Standing outside your door, these thoughts are so hard to bear. And then I would move on to take five, have a listen to that. Stand 
standing outside of your door. These thoughts are so hard to bear. And so on and so on. Now, one thing I'll mention is I'm listening to these vocals dry, so no effects. So you'll see there's no EQ, no compression, no reverb, no delay. So this way I make sure that none of the effects are influencing my decisions. I'm also listening to the track, but I have it quite quiet right now. Sometimes I'll just solo the vocal so I can just hear the vocal, but the track's nice to have so that you make sure that the timing's correct as well with the vocal. So once you've listened to all the tracks and you find the one you'd like to select, all you have to do is click and drag in the track itself. That'll highlight and select the take you want to use. So for example, if I decide this take is the one I want to use, I just click and drag over. And now you'll see that take number five is highlighted in blue. And that's what's going to show up up here. And you can see here, the little edit points and crossfades line up with this take. So right now what's happening is the dead space at the beginning is going to be coming from take two and then we're grabbing take five here. So I could actually just pull this back and just take all of take five. I will cut out this dead air later anyways. And from here, it jumps down to take number two. So one thing you want to do is I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and you want to make sure that your edit points are not happening on a breath or a word. So I can just put this in the middle of the breath and the next word and nothing's cutting off here. Because if you have it in the middle of a word, then that's not gonna sound so great and you're gonna have some problems. So you wanna make sure that you can find a little bit of silence where you can make that edit point happen. And then the same thing goes for any other points. So if I decided that this little phrase here is better on this take. I can do that. And then once again, I'll just zoom in a little bit. And even that out a little bit. So I'll have the one breath end there. The next breath starts there. And over here, that looks pretty good right there. And let's say maybe we'll just take the last word from there. And then we'll just have a quick listen back to make sure we're happy with that. Standing outside of your door, these thoughts are so hard to bear. They weigh heavy on me, like a chill through the air. Feeling lost and ashamed I want to tell you and more My words just fall through my heart They're left unsaid on the floor I should tell Actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a different last note here. Let's see. That's better. And now once you've created your comp, what you can do is we can minimize it again by hitting the little arrow here. Usually what I like to do is flatten this comp track. But before I do that, I make a copy and you'll see in a minute why I do that. So I'm just going to create a duplicate track here. I'm going to copy this track down by holding Option, dragging this down. So now I've made an exact copy. I'll mute that track. And then here I go to the little C here and I go down to flatten. And then that gets rid of all the other takes. And I'm just left with the takes in my comp that I selected. And then now I can shorten this and shorten this end as well. And if I zoom in here, I'll do a little fade at the beginning and you'll notice it automatically puts fades in between the two takes. And you can also still adjust the edit points. So if I click in the middle here, I can drag over from one take to the next. Now, the reason why I made the copy of this track is so that if I ever decide later that, oh, you know what, there's actually this one word that I want to replace that I didn't catch the first time around, then I can always go back to this track and I have all the takes in here. 
And another thing that I do often is also create a new project alternative. So that way I can have different snapshots of my recording session. So let's say I made a project alternative of how this is right now. I could always delete this track, but still go back later from the different project alternative and get it from there. I've got another whole tutorial on project alternatives, so I'll link that in the description for you. I like to keep my vocals tracks in this state, as I mentioned, simply because then I can switch the edit points if I need to. But some people might prefer to merge or glue all of these together. So you can do that directly when you're flattening the comp. If you go to C and then go flatten and merge, I just clicked on flatten. Or you can do it after the fact by just getting our glue tool, selecting all the tracks and gluing those and that'll create a new file. And all the fades and cross fades will be embedded into that file as well. Now, what if you happen to record all your takes on different tracks or if you're importing them from another DAW? Well, I'll show you how you can put those all into a comp track. So we'll go back to this track here. And again, I'll just click on C here. And one thing you can do is you can unpack all the tracks to new tracks. So if I click on this, now you'll see I have the comp at the top which I'll just delete that. And then I have the two other comps that I created. And these are all the tracks that were recorded. So like I said, maybe you recorded them on separate tracks without knowing about the comp feature or somebody sent these to you that were working in different DAW. So all you gotta do once you have them on separate tracks, make sure they're all lined up and in sync with each other. You can simply highlight all of them, right click, go down to folder, and go to pack take folder. And then now you'll see we have our comp track once again, got a little arrow, and we can do our comp edits the same way as we did them earlier. The last thing I'm going to show you is how you can move around some of your different takes that are found within your comp track. So let's say that you have to shift over a phrase a little bit or something like that. Um, currently, we can't do that. If we just grab a note, that'll just turn into our comp. So what you have to do up here is you'll see these little, you got these little blocks. If we click on that, now you'll notice the scissors. So in doing this, now we can grab the take and we can actually move the take over if we need to. I'm just gonna undo that. And you can also use the scissor tool. And if I chop that, then I can move that over as well. And then when you wanna go back to just doing your regular comp, then you click the scissors and you'll see these different takes, little block tracks show up again, and then you continue on to do your tracks. So that just toggles between the two modes in the comp track. So if you need to do just your regular comp, you'll have this icon. And if you need to do any edits, such as moving takes around, then you'll click and you'll display the scissor tool. So as you just saw, comp tracks and take folders make it really easy and quick to quickly select the most desirable tracks in your Logic Pro session. Don't forget to download your free Logic Pro hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.